Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we rejoin Duke T of Cupboard and last time out Duke T did a very good job of making himself more popular because at the start of the previous part Duke T was not very popular at all. People didn't like T which is a concept that I'm struggling to get my head around if I'm completely honest but there we go. I think maybe people didn't like him because he was new to the job, he'd not long taken over from poor Duke Waltheoff and people didn't know what kind of person he was going to be. His diplomacy was and still is quite terrible and people just didn't like him very much but he's turned it round. He's absolutely turned it round as T. If we go over to the court and have a look, when we looked at this last time at the start of the previous part, most of the opinions over here were in the negative. People just were not happy with T taking over at all but now look, I mean we've got plus 12s, plus 21s, these are only plus 2 but they're still plus which is fine. Yeah we'll take that, we'll take a positive reputation. 61, 61 there. Okay that's our daughter. She's slightly biased but that's fine. 65, 38, 45s, they're all positive. They're all positive. Even our own wife likes us now. Hooray, because she didn't like us very much at all. She didn't like us, which was a little bit of a concern, but now, you know, we've turned that around a bit and she likes us as well. So yeah, it's all looking very, very good. So Weldon T, that's very impressive. Now I'd like to say that it was to do with his wonderful kind of policies he put in place. It was all the diplomacy that he actually got sorted. I mean, okay, a lot of it probably came from Good Hat there with his amazing sort of uh, chancery skills. But I think if we look at it, if we look at when it changed, I think it was the moment when we gave him his fancy piece of headgear. Now, I'm not calling this a hat. I kind of see a hat as something that goes over your entire head. Whereas this is more of a, it's kind of like a, a kind of a crown light, if you like. It's like the bottom bit of a crown, but without the pointy bits. Because, yeah, the crown has sort of pointy, extravagant kind of bits on the top, but it's still got the kind of headband bit. So it's kind of like, you know, a crown light. It all changed when we gave him that which was very important to notice. So, you know, don't underestimate the power of a nice shiny bit of headgear to make people like you. Because obviously people go, ooh, look, he's very important. He's got a shiny thing on his head. That's very good. So, so there we go. He's got a shiny piece of headgear and people like him a bit more now, which is wonderful. So good job, T. He also last time went on a bit of a pilgrimage and it was a dangerous pilgrimage. We didn't know it was going to be dangerous, but we decided to go on a pilgrimage all the way to Jerusalem. There we go. It's builded here. And um, it was, it was, uh, it was fraught with danger. It was was fraught with problems and it was a proper test of his faith. T's faith was very much tested and um, he got ill and there were bandits and there was all sorts of other stuff going on but we managed to get through it. He came back, he took back with him a massive, massive pile of piety which was wonderful and we've got ourselves up to a faithful level of devotion which is wonderful so you know we're slowly working our way up through that as well which is very very good and um, he's been doing some mystical communioning too and uh, where's that one so he's got some divine guidance point in martial and a point of learning and also yep stress gain is down and stress loss is increased as well which is wonderful and we helped out our liege in a bit of a battle that he had with Scotland so Scotland came knocking trying to take the English throne away from King William and we decided to join in the side of our own liege. We could have possibly joined in Scotland's claim and then caused a right sort of a right problem for this place here because um, then England would have been taken over by Scotland and it would have all been very very complicated. I don't really know how that would have panned out. I imagine this would have all become Scotland but we decided to uh, go on the side of our liege and um, whose troops were a little bit weird. They did some very kind of strange stuff did, uh, did the English troops. They were a little bit kind of all over the place but we did our job and we helped him win the war which is wonderful um, and that's where we kind of find ourselves now. We find ourselves now with that war done while our troops are stood down. You know it's relatively peaceful but we do find ourselves now in a very unlikely kind of partnership with someone. So here we find ourselves in a Liberty faction with none other than Duke Glowithian, which is a bit of a surprise because I don't really think that we should be getting on. Our houses do not get on. You didn't get on with our dad. I don't think we get on with you too well either. I mean, your opinion of us, it's not utterly terrible. It's not brilliant either. It could be a lot better, but you know, it's, it's, it's not too awful. But I don't think we get on. I don't think we're going to ever be best buddies. And the weird thing about this is that we want lower crown authority so we can declare war on Duke Lewithian and take the Duchy of Brynek for ourselves because clearly it's rightly ours. I mean, you know, it's clearly got cupboardy stuff written all over it. I mean, you know, it's got, this place here is Cumberland and Cup begins cupboard. Uh, okay, that's a bit of a weak kind of claim there, but you know, it's fine. I'm sure you get the idea. So, you know, that's rightly ours. Of course it is. It's rightly Cabordian. And um, we can't at the moment take this off him because we need to have a weak hook on our king because of the level of crown authority he is exerting on everybody. He's got high crown authority down on all his vassals. We're one of the king's vassals and we need a hook. 
we'd hook on the king in order to declare war on anybody else who is a vassal of that king or anyone else under the king I believe as well so we can't do anything at the moment we can't declare war on any of these people at all we just can't do it it's not allowed under the laws of the land however if this faction succeeds if that faction goes through and we're able to lower the crown authority that will mean that we can declare war on people again and then we can declare war on Duke Glowithian and try and take the Duchy of Brynek back under our control which would be which would be kind of amusing wouldn't it because he's the one here saying hey let's get lower crown authority and then we're going to use that thing that he proposed and then yeah we're going to use it to take some of his stuff off him <laughs> which is it's quite funny however we do need to um we need to wait a little while for this military power is 146 percent so if we pressed our demand and said right okay king william ii do this now and he said no there would be a bit of a civil war and we would be fighting england we've only got 146 sort of military power over his 100 percent. so you know we're not doing too well over it i mean okay we've got an advantage but that could be better that could be a lot better so i think we need to leave this for a little while we need to leave that just ticking over maybe more people will join now yeah it's more successful than when we tried to start on our own a little while back where nobody joined and we just sort of left it out of shame we just sort of quietly closed the door on it and went away so we'll have to see how that progresses but that's really interesting. I'm very, very, very amused that he's actually set that up because, you know, he's set up this thing that's eventually just going to come back and, yeah, it's going to come back and haunt him a bit when we eventually take this off him, which is going to be splendid. And a few little admin things to get out of the way first, just before we get time moving on. Number one, our Marshal Chappy just here. Let's move him over to training commanders because as well as it may be improving knights and finding new commanders and stuff, it also saves us 28% on the cost of our men-at-arms maintenance. So we're currently, while he's on, um, or organized levies which we don't need we don't need organized levies right now because we're not at war we don't need extra garrison sizes and all that kind of stuff so we don't need that so while we're on that we are making 13.7 gold per month which is that's very good that's pretty good if we switch it over to train commanders it goes up to 14.7 so we save ourselves one gold every month just from having that on and across the course of a year in maths with penge that's 12 gold a year we've saved there which is pretty good saving that is a very, very good saving. So yes, it makes perfect sense to have you switched over to that. And the second thing we need to deal with involves our steward Leofold over here. So he is currently over in Staffordshire and he is performing the increased development in county task. And that's absolutely fine. I like the increased development in county task because when you have highly developed counties, they give you more taxes and you get more levies. And I kind of just like the idea. I like the idea of what they're doing. The fact they're going to a county and, you know, they're building better roads and they're building bridges and they're just making it a more developed, sort of more efficient place to live. So I don't mind him doing that. All we're going to do we're going to move him to a different county. So he's going to carry on increasing development. He's just going to move to a different county to do that. And that's come from some people in the comments that have pointed out that if one county has a very, very high development level, the other counties around it kind of get boost. They kind of leech off that particular county and get boost to their own development growth. I assume what happens is the people in these slightly less developed counties look over the border at their neighbours, at their really developed county neighbours, and go, do you know what? Those guys are really clever. They've got a really, really nice bridge over there. That's a really clever idea. I'd never have thought to build a bridge like that. Can we build a bridge like that, please? And they go away and they build their own bridge like that. And yeah, they're kind of just borrowing ideas from their neighbours. And I think we can see that over here in Herefordshire. So Herefordshire has got a development of 13. Now, I think that might be... Is that the highest in the entire Duchy of Cupboard? Yes, it is. Northamptonshire's got 12, but yeah, Herefordshire's got 13. Well done, Herefordshire. Good job. So if we look at the um, their sort of development thing over here, they've got 13, and this is the calculation that shows their development increase. And currently, their monthly growth is nothing, and they get nothing from their neighbours. Because if we look around, they are really quite developed compared to their neighbours. They've got 11, there's 11, there's 10, there's 11, there is 10, and there's 12. Okay, so Gloucester are you know, looking okay, but Herefordshire don't get any kind of boost of development from their neighbours because they can't because they're better than all their neighbours. They are far superior to all of their neighbours in terms of how developed their county is. So they can't get a boost. It's simply not possible. But if we look over here at Worcestershire, who are neighbours with Herefordshire, if we look at their development from their neighbours, they get a 0 0.3 boost to their development every month which after all the sort of uh, the things have been applied or the different sort of percentage modifiers goes up to 0 0.4 so because they are neighboring Herefordshire and probably some other good people as well what have they got 10 so yeah so Shropshire 11 uh, at that place there so Warwickshire is 11 Gloucestershire is 12 so because they're neighboring sort of places that have got good development they get quite a nice boost so what we should do is we should pick a county that borders lots of other counties 
and just really work the development of that county. Just really, really get it very developed. And all the other neighbouring counties will get a nice boost from that. I think that's what our plan is going to be. So how about, I mean, what county borders the most? Northamptonshire borders one, two, three. Leicestershire, how many is that border? One, two, three, and four. I think Warwickshire might be the one. It borders Northamptonshire, Leicestershire, Staffordshire, Shropshire, and Worcestershire. Yeah, that borders five. So we get the most from developing up Warwickshire. So how about, yeah, move you over to here, please. There we go, increase development in that county. I mean, it's gonna take four years. It's going to take four years. You're not the best steward in the world. I mean, you're okay, and you're trying very, very hard. And for that, I'm very, very thankful. Well done you, I'm very proud, pat on the head. But uh, yeah, four years to get development up by one point. That's quite a long time. I mean, okay, maybe we need to look at getting a better steward in at some point in the future. But uh, but you know what? There we go. So that's what we'll do. And we'll see if that makes a difference. In four years' time, when this starts ticking up, we'll see if the other counties start getting nice boosts to their own development. And with all that stuff done, we can move time on now, finally, at long last. So here we go. Now, what can we do with this big pile of money we have? I kind of feel like we need to invest it somewhere. We need to do something very exciting with this pile of money. What can we do over in Northampton? Can we start upgrading extra bits and bobs? How about we upgrade the bastions and curtain walls? That's probably not that expensive. That's going to cost us. Put a bailey in, 191 gold. We've got 545. So how about we do that? That gets us a little bit of tax. The fort level goes up, the garrison goes up, and it can hold a few more people with more supplies. Yeah, okay, how about we do that? So we'll improve that over in Northamptonshire. And then what about Kettering? Can we do anything over in Kettering? It doesn't look like we can. Could we improve, could we go from a shrine to proper temple grounds? It's really expensive. It's very, very expensive indeed to do that. And then over in Peterborough, uh, oh, these are all just level one. These are all just level one buildings. Oh, Peterborough, let's give you a little treat, shall we, Peterborough? Um, okay, so we can improve the guilds up to Carver's Guilds. We can improve the hunting grounds up to Hound Pens, which is all jolly exciting. Or we could get Cattle Lands increased, which then gives a bit more tax and brings down, in this county, building construction costs and building construction time. How much extra money do we get from that? 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. Do you know what? Let's do that, shall we? Let's let's upgrade our wetland farms to peat quarries. Nice big, great big load of peat. There we go. Right, so we'll get some peat into the county. Wonderful. Okay, this is interesting. So on our little lovely stained glass window sort of issue notifier thing, it says we can declare wars. And some of them, yes, we know we can. Duke Lewithia and all these other people. We can declare wars on them kind of in theory, but we need the hook on our liege. And we haven't got that right now. However, this person here, I don't know why we can declare war on Petty Queen Adelaide the Bully of Brittany. Why, why can we declare war on you? So Brittany's down here, um, an excommunication war. Okay, so you've been booted out by the Pope, have you? Hang on, let's have a look at you. Who are you? What's going on here? Um, okay, so you're obese. Okay, so you're not overly well and you have been excommunicated. Yes, yeah, so you've been excluded from participating in religious services. You've been booted out by the Pope. You're a bit of a party animal. You've got, oh yeah, you've got the lover's pox, okie doke. You're a bit reckless. You're, you're all right, but making a bit of money. You're quite good at stewardship. You're lazy, you're honest, and you're gluttonous. Okay, okay, so you've been booted out. So we could, in theory, if we wanted to, go to war with you to depose you and put your child upon the throne. You've only got one child. You've only got one child and your spouse is dead. Your spouse is... Uh, what? Hang on, that's Prince Renault. That's Prince Renault. That's that's Clara's former husband. He's now dead. He died in 1150. He died three years ago. Oh, yeah. He was Clara's husband, wasn't he? Hang on a minute. Oh, my goodness me. He's 33. So he married Clara. Hang on. When did Clara die? Clara died in 1106. Okay. And then he went on to marry Queen Mother... The Queen Mother of France who died at the age of old age. She died at the age of 65. Okay, I assume that was like a political sort of thing. And then he married her. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me indeed. That is that is fascinating. Hang on a minute. So they're our, yeah, our nephews. Where are they now? Our nephews are just, they just unlanded. Oh, they're at our court. Of course they are. They pop up at the start. They didn't like us very much, did they, at one point? Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. So they're just hanging around at our court. Um, I mean, you're you're not too bad. Who's looking after your... Who's looking after your education? Because you could be quite good people. You could be quite useful. Can we get somebody to educate you, please? This is fascinating. I didn't even realise they were there. Um, okay. Spymaster, would you like to educate... Oh, no, hang on. What's he doing? Martial education. Okay, he's 14. He's got a martial education and he's got a martial of six. Right, hang on. Who's good at doing martial stuff? Um, 
I mean, Sigrid, but Sigrid's got too many people on the go, I think. I don't think we can get her... I think we can get her to teach everybody. And what about you, Mr. Mr. Rose? Let's get you to do that. So would you like to do that? You go and teach this person. Right, and then your brother... Your brother is also... What are you doing? A learning education. Ah, okay. Educate you. Um, so who is good at learning? Um, you. Elfstan. Let's get you in on that then, please. So you go and teach them some important things. Oh my goodness me. Well, there we go. There we go. We've, we've got two nephews just hanging around inside court that I never really sort of paid attention to. However, hang on. What were we doing? We were looking at this person, weren't we? Hello. Right, so you. So, right, Prince Renemi's dead. And now, yeah, we could... We could boot you off the throne. Hang on a minute. You're, you've got one daughter. You've got one daughter who is the heir to the petty kingdom of Brittany. Hang on a moment. Hang on a second. Can we can we marry her to, to one of the children, possibly? Is this a thing we can do? Can we arrange a marriage? Um, Yeah, this is interesting. Hang on. So, Sieghelm. We could marry you to Sieghelm. Um, how old are you? You're nine. Okay, can we marry them to... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, age. Let's get them near to our sort of relative age. What about Waltheof? Eight. He's eight. And he's not... He's obviously not betrothed to anybody because he wouldn't come up in this list otherwise. If we marry him to her... So marry him to her and then his mum... Uh, well, sorry, her mum passes away. She becomes queen and then we become in charge of Brittany. And then any children, if we can do... Can we do this in terms of... Can we do this in... Um, yeah, children of this marriage will be born into house cupboard. Chance of children, medium. And she's going to accept... Oh, oh, this is very interesting. Hang on a minute. Why do you want to accept? You want an alliance. You like us. Um, a little bit down because she's obviously dear to her mum. But of course, yep, she's the only child. And they're the only... You know, they've only got each other left. It's all very sad. Um, yes. Okay. Hang on, do we get we get an alliance as well? I mean, they've got 1,841 troops. So they've got quite a nice amount of troops. And also, yeah, we might end up kind of in charge of in charge of this place. We might end up in charge of Brittany, which would be very interesting indeed. Right, what are you like? You're you're just pensive. Okay, fine. But you're okay. Um, yes, I see no reason not to do this. Yes, absolutely. Send that proposal, please. Go and do that. Is that going to come through? Is that going to work? That would be great if they actually accept that. Yes. Okay, so we've got an alliance, which is always a good thing. And um, and yes, okay, yeah, we'll absolutely sort that out, please. I like the way that up here, <laughs> up here it said, hey, you can go to war with them. And then we've just sort of taken a little bit of time, looked and gone, right, we're marrying into that family. So uh, yeah, thank you, kind of issues notifier. Um, but uh, yeah, that didn't help too much because yeah, we've done the complete opposite of what you were kind of suggesting. Okay, thick as thieves. Um, as of late, I often see my son and heir, Ethelweird, and my reeve, uh, my reeve, my vassal, reeve Wolfgar. You're from Coventry. You don't like me very much. Around the castle, deep in conversation. They truly seem to have found common ground. To see such friendship grow, I will help it bloom. Okay, so they gain 20 opinion of each other. Okay, um, that can't be any good. They lose 20 opinion of me. Okay, that's bad. So, what are you talking about? Okay, 40% chance that... Um, that they like me there, and a 60% chance that I come across as nosy, and they get grumpy with me. Why do we not want them to be friends? Why not? It's absolutely fine. Yes, go and be friendly, because eventually we might be playing as you. You know, if you survive, and eventually T will pass away at some point. If you survive, then yeah, we might be playing as you. So the fact that you might be sort of, you know, uh, sort of pally with a vassal, that's probably quite a good thing. So yeah, okay, yeah, do that, absolutely. Earl Peter has been excommunicated by the Pope. Earl Peter is nearby, isn't he? He's Cambridgeshire. Earl Peter, what have you been doing? What have these people been doing to annoy the Pope so much? <laughs> oh my goodness me. Oh, oh dear, yeah, you are, you've been recently excommunicated. So everybody with the same faith of you is now thinking a little bit less of you. Um, okay, oh, you're really, oh, you're just terrible. You're vengeful, sadistic and gluttonous. Yeah, I'm not surprised the Pope didn't like you. I'm not surprised. You're you're ticking all the boxes of one of the bad guys. <laughs> you're in the Pope's big bad book of bad people. Um, 
Okay, fine. There we go. He's been excommunicated as well. You know, it seems to be quite a common thing now. Oh, yes. A few people last time out in the comments said, can you please go and check on Christina? Because I don't think she's doing very well. And you know what? You're absolutely right. It's all going a little bit wrong for poor Duchess Christina. It was going so well. She got this wonderful duchy given to her for our participation in the first crusade that we took part in. And it was all very exciting. But, uh, but yeah, her life hasn't been particularly brilliant since then. So now she finds herself, oh, dear. Oh, she is severely injured. She's flagellant, so she does like sort of uh, beating herself with one of those sort of whip things. She's not eating properly. I mean, she was once our sort of proud Amazonian super daughter, but yeah, she has fallen upon very, very hard time. She's not having a good time of it at all. I mean, she's lost. Who's that there? Who holds Acre now? What place holds that? Is that Denmark? The Kingdom of De Why are the Kingdom of Denmark down there? This is a very obscure place to go and capture. But okay, so Denmark have taken that place, the uh, barony, yeah, so the sort of county of Acre. So they took that off her. So she's still only got, she's got, what's she got? The Duchy of Erdun and then the Earldom of Tiberius. That's it. So she is still, she is still a duchess, but yeah, her sort of uh, duchy is broken up now. She doesn't control all the bits in the duchy, which is unfortunate. Um, okay, and how's everyone else doing? Her daughter there, her 16-year-old daughter is, is is an intricate web-weaving drunkard at 16. Oh my goodness me. Um, Leo Gifu um, is, you're doing much better. Okay, so you're comely or comely, you're bossy, fickle, callous and diligent. And then um, you, answer, you are, you're very, very tiny, tiny, but you're Amazonian, of course. Yes, wonderful. So you have at least passed on the Amazonian gene to one of the kids, which is splendid. Um, and yeah, everyone else pointed out as well that the um, we obviously married her to this chappy, Duke Ferdinand, but he is dead. He is no more. He died from complications related to obesity um, in 1115. Oh dear. So she has remarried to Duke Egidio Enekes of Erdun. Ah, okay, right. So he's he's a local. He's from down here. That's absolutely fine. Oh my goodness me. Oh, Christina. Oh, Christina. It's not looking good, is it? It's not looking good. However, she is allied to somebody who's down here. That could be quite useful. I imagine that's uh, relatives of his, is it, or something. But yeah, that could be quite handy indeed. Because, uh, yeah, you're, we can't help. We can't help her, which I don't really like. I feel a little bit sort of feeble. But, uh, but you know, we can't help her. So it's good that she at least has a friend down there. I hope things turn around, Duchess Christina. I really do. Because, because you know, don't, don't tell the others this. But you were Duke Waltheos' favourite daughter. You were the favourite one. Because, you know, all the Amazonian stuff and everything. So I hope things sort out for you. And, you know, things end up being really rather nice again. And Good Hat has invited us to a feast, which is lovely. Because, of course, it's nice to go to a feast thrown by someone else. Because normally it's us putting the feast on. So, okay, brother, how are you? I look forward to this feast. I'd like to think that because we're gluttonous, I know it's not our own feast, but I'd like to think we would still lose a bit of stress from this. That'd be quite nice. Feast, the dilemma. The feast is dwindling down. I find myself deep in conversation with my obtuse vassal, Reeve Ethelweird. Okay, so you are from Reeve Ethelweird of Norman Cross. Okay, so we don't get on overly well. Okay, he inquires about my opinion on friendship, a subject he's deeply interested in himself. It's a subject that fascinates me as well. I could not care less. <laughs> I mean, I don't see T saying that. T's, he's quite a nice person, I see T. So, yeah, I mean, okay, right, he likes a bit of food. He likes he likes a snack or two here and there. But, yeah, you know, he's he's kind of fickle, but just he's not mean or horrible or, you know, terrible or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's a subject that fascinates me as well. He gets 20 opinion of us, which will put him in the positive, which is quite nice. And then we might become his friend. Let's have a look to see if that actually happens. And I think we have. Yes, we have ourselves another friend. He is chaste, he is arbitrary, and he is temperate as well. Okay, right, so we've got a buddy. The insufferable wait. I cannot believe how long we've been waiting for the food. Are we here to eat or to admire the grain of the wooden table? What are you staring at, Reeve Ethelweird? I'm just very hungry. Okay, I can smell it from the kitchen too. Reeve Ethelweird loses 15 opinion of me. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a roller coaster, this relationship. Um, but we do get gratifying complaints for five years. So, oh my goodness, so if I, yeah, gain stress, if T gains stress, we're going to gain 25% less, and if we lose stress, we're going to lose 25% more. We've already got that from our, our sort of communioning thing, haven't we? Yeah, our divine guidance. Oh, that's, that's really good. That's really good. So if we do something that loses stress, we're going to lose a, an absolute massive heap of stress. Okay, right, this party has been very good. Okay, the party's still ongoing. After extensive conversation over our delectable dishes... Oh, they finally arrived then. Uh, Reef Wolfhelm, 
Who are you? You're from Wolverhampton. You don't like us much either. Expresses that he finds me most learned and wise. That's because I am most learned and wise. And that my utterances are always of inestimable worth to those less well-read than I. Ooh, okay. Um, so he gains five opinion of us, which puts us into the positive, which is quite good. And uh, we gain 75 prestige. Well, thank you very much, Reeve Wolfhelm. That, that, that's really nice of you. Thank you very much. And we are returning home. Okay, what a feast. Lovely, lovely. Um, we lose 88 stress because we are gluttonous. 88 stress from one event because we're gluttonous. So we'd lose probably stress because we came to a party. But then because of all our other modifiers, <laughs> we're going to go down to utterly nothing. We're going down to zero stress. We're, we're very relaxed right now. We are super, super chilled out. Hang on a minute. I think Seekhelm might be a knight. Yes, Seekhelm is a knight. Seekhelm, I'm very sorry. I mean, I know you look the part. You look kind of a little bit cross with everything. But uh, but no, you can't go and do that because, you know, you'll end up getting killed. Um, oh, no, not that, though. Not that upon your head. No, 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 no. I mean, if you're going to wear anything, there, look, wear that, look. At least it's a hood. I mean, it'll keep the rain off better, if anything else. So there we go. Do you know what, actually? Yeah, you've got hood. That's fine. I like that. And um, yeah, then we've got then we've got crowns. Okay, right. It's all fine. That's all good. Um, oh, look. Oh, hang on. Hang on. T's got a grand, a grand, let's have a look, a grandson. T has a grandson. Oh, this, this is beautiful. This is what we wanted. I mean, okay, we're planning way, way down the line here. And you offer, you have to survive and we'll try our best to keep you alive. We'll do what we can. But this is wonderful. So, of course, right now, we're playing as T. T's not very good. He's not brilliant, but he's muddling through. He's trying his best. Then eventually, if obviously everything goes to plan, T will pass away. It's all very sad. Then we play as Ethelweird for a bit. And Ethelweird is handsome. He's greedy. He's just. He's zealous. He's, again, not brilliant. He, he doesn't excel in anything particularly. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's a bit of a jack of all trades, um, which is fine. That's okay. But then now, they've got a child. So once you pass away, Ethelweird, and if Offer here survives, Offer is beautiful and Offer is quick. Two physical traits. You're beautiful and quick, which is wonderful. So so well done. Well done, Offer. This is excellent. You've got two physical traits. So there we go. You're hopefully going to be really, really good. And we might end up playing as this character, which is very, very exciting indeed. So, okay, right. Can we educate you a little bit, please? Uh, yeah, let's do this. Who can educate you? I mean, Sigrid. Sigrid, can can you educate anybody else? You're currently just educating Clementia. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Educate our grandson, who we're going to be playing as one day. Go and do that, because you're really good, Sigrid. <laughs> You've got some really, really good stats. So, absolutely, you go and you go and teach those children. Oh, our court physician has gained the trait physician. That's got to be a good thing. Well done, you. Yay, you're actually properly sort of able to do doctory things now. Got plenty of experience tending to the sick and wounded. Oh, well done, you. And you've got a learning of 18, which is very, very good as well. So, okay, right, I'm happy with that. That's a good thing. Well done. Um, I was just looking in here, over in our vassals. We're not swaying anybody right now. So, yeah, we could be swaying somebody to get them, you know, a little bit more favour with us. So why don't we just go and sway Reeve Wolfgarve Coventry? Because he is our vassal, but he doesn't like us very much. Minus 13. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Pause time for a second. Right. Sway you, 83% chance of success. It's going to take absolutely ages, but okie doke. And we've gone up another level of devotion. We are a devoted servant. The third level of devotion. There's only five. So we're in the middle. We're in the middle of that tier, which is very, very nice. And we're progressing toward a paragon of virtue, which just sounds very, very good indeed. But there we go. We're slowly working our way up. So yeah, now the uh, Catholic clergy like us a little bit more, which is no bad thing. Oh no, Frederick has died. Oh, Frederick, he was our, our bishop guy. Yeah, he was our bishop guy. He was our friend. So we've gained a little bit of stress. Now, of course, because of all our modifiers, it's a little bit less stress. We're not quite as stressed as we would have been. But, um, oh, Frederick's died. Now, however, does the new bishop like us? Hello, new bishop. Do you like us? Um, your, who are you? Your bishop, uh, Wolfhelm. Okay, you're a mastermind philosopher. Uh, you're also lustful and sadistic. Again, I don't know quite how you got into the church there, but okie dokie. Um, and you're generous, which is quite nice. That's that's a very good sort of churchy thing. So okie doke. Right, so you've now joined and you do like us, just not very much. In fact, do you know what? Devoted servant gives us the plus 10 we need to actually make sure you do sort of endorse us and we get all of your sort of church holdings and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we could do with you liking us a little bit more, I think. Oh, 
And there you are. Do you know what? It's a wonderful jumper you've got on. <laughs> Did you get it for Christmas? from Granny. Um, okay, staring at stars. From all my evenings watching stars, I have seen with my own eyes what I have only heard of before. The stars move at different speeds and reverse their course at different times, but seemingly in large groups, depending on which celestial sphere they belong to. Indeed, with the right calculations, one could even predict their movement. My bishop does not approve, of course. Leave the skies be. The celestial realm is for the clergy to know. Okay, I will find my answers in the heavens. We get 50 learning lifestyle. We gain insight into the heavens. So we get an extra point of stewardship. Oh. Oh, I quite like the idea of that. We get some more stewardship. We get some more learning. We get prestige. He then gets a bit sort of huffy with us because we've ignored him. So he loses 10 opinion of us, which is a shame because that puts us below the limit where he's not going to endorse us, which is a shame. Or if we say, yes, I completely agree. Um, earthly matters. We gain 25 learning lifestyle, 250 piety, earthly focus. Monthly piety plus 5%, clergy opinion, and he gains 50 in opinion of us. That might lead on a path of zealousness or a path of cynicism. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, we've gone down the whole, we've gone down the whole pilgrimage route. I see T as being someone who's becoming more in touch with sort of, you know, religion and the Lord and God and stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't think we should go down a path of cynicism. Now, I know I'd, I'd like that. Stewardship plus one would be really, really helpful. That's more money and stuff. But in terms of the character of T, I don't think he probably would. I think he would say, do you know what? Yes, indeed. The, the divine is for the divine. Um, we will have an earthly focus, more piety, more clergy opinion. He then gets more opinion of us. I think that's that's what T would do. And that's what this game is all about. It's kind of, you know, playing your character, if you like. So there we go. So T is now not looking at the stars so much. I imagine he's still looking up a little bit. But uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. So we sorted that out. A faction has been created against King William. Oh, crikey. Uh, my marshal, Mr. Rose, has been showing off a promising new recruit. Okay, now, now, if you're good, if you're good, we will not recruit you via right-clicking here. We will just do this. So, um, yeah, do you want to join us? I mean, you're quite good as a knight. You're quite good. You're a... Okay, you're a, your lifestyle trait is that you're a torturer. <laughs> yeah, other other people like chess or writing. What's your lifestyle trait? Yeah, just a bit, a bit of light torture every so often. Uh, okay, fine. You're a flexible leader. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Come in. I imagine you'll become a knight pretty much straight away. There we go. And we can unlock a new perk for the learning lifestyle. Okay, we're nearly down here. We're nearly on Learn on the Job, where we get 20% of our counsellor skills added to our own, so we're slightly not quite as rubbish. Okay, so apostate, different faith opinion goes up by plus 15, and faith conversion cost is down, but I don't think we need to worry too much about that. Okay, so bring that to there. Oh, the next time is going to be so good. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to actually get some stats. T, you're going to get some stats, and it's going to be wonderful. Oh, this is interesting. So down here, the Kingdom of Wales has once again become a thing. So there's a tiny bit of Wales right at the bottom of, you know, Wales and everything. But the top bit is still controlled by uh, Duke Gluithian as part of Brainiac. But yeah, Wales is down here, but it looks like... It looks like Gluithian is down here having a bit of a fight about that. Um, you, wherever you are, where are you? You're a vast in the Holy Roman Empire and you have converted to Waldensianism. Okie doke. The fervour of that is 100. Okay, so it's really, really popular. People like it. We consider them hostile. They consider us hostile. Um, I, I'm not overly interested. It's fine. You go and do that. You do your own thing there. So, uh, yeah, it looks like, it looks like um, Gluithian has declared war upon. You're attacking Prince Richard the fifth of England in the war against who's Prince Richard the fifth of England in the war against the tyranny of Prince Richard the fifth who's who's Prince Richard the fifth who's that who's Prince Richard the <laughs> fifth hang on who are you you're you're a child you're a four-year-old child and you're attacking against the tyranny of a four-year-old child hang on now I'm really confused what's happening here um where are you what do you what do you look after now I'm baffled you look after Normandy. Oh, oh, okay, right. So yes, when um, when Chappie died, when King Richard the Foolish died, he must have had multiple kids. They're like, we're going to have to sort of sort out soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so his one of his sons, you there, Prince Richard V, um, you've been given Normandy down here. So there's a bit of a fight going on down there. I don't really care about that. What else is Gluithian involved in? What else are you involved in, Gluithian? And then um, you're attacking King John of Wales. The Brainiac claim on the Duchy of De Hubarth. You love that duchy down there. You're obsessed with getting that duchy under your control, my good sir. Good grief. Um, okay, now the only good thing about this is that he is fighting. 
So if he's fighting now, his troops are going to be weak. Can we, maybe, we see what happens in that war. We keep an eye on this and we see what happens. Because, yeah, look, there's, they're going to be losing troops via you know, the fact they're sieging and what have you. Hopefully there'll be some fighting as well. Some troops will appear. They'll lose some via sort of, you know, sort of uh, fights and sieges and what have you. Then they'll be depleted in their numbers. And then we might be able to go through and have a fight with them. However, the Pope has come calling on his Pope phone. Uh, okay, a papal envoy has reached my court, bringing news from the Vatican. Okay, who are we going to fight this time? Uh, desecrating the holy grounds of Murder Sid. I don't know where that is. Where is that? The Sultanate of Syria. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's not too far from Christina. It's not too far from Christina's little house. Okay. So down here. So they want us to take that place. Um, that is going to be... It's about a year, isn't it? From when they announce it. Do you know what? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. We'll go and join in. We'll go and join in again. It's all fine. We've got some people just kicking about. Got almost 4,100 people. I'm sure we'll be fine. But yeah, that might ruin this plan a little bit. They might be fighting for a long, long time. Let's see how it's actually going. Military strength. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, they've, they've got more people than us. Oh, they've got loads more people. Pope, you need to be more convincing. Offer, offer exciting things. <laughs> offer exciting prizes. Holiday homes or, you know, big piles of money or whatever. Um, okay. Yeah, that's that's certainly... Oh, no. Hang on. Hang on. It's ticking back. It's ticking back. Pope would... Oh, it's, it's, it's gone in the way of the Pope. It, it, Catholicism has... Oh, my goodness me. Lots of people are joining. Okay. Okay. Oh, we can appoint a beneficiary this time. Oh. Um, that's our niece. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Select you as a beneficiary. Yay. Splendid. Okay. So, yeah, maybe you might get something out of this. Oh, my goodness me. This is going to be a huge war. In 13 months' time, all this stuff is going to kick off. Okay. Knight has become a blade master. Um, well done, you. Um, oh, you're the steward. You're the steward. Okay. I mean, I like the fact that you're better at stabby stabbing. Could you be better at, you know, counting, counting the money? That would be helpful. Uh, and okay, some stuff's happened there. Okay, so how long have we got? A year's time. So in a year's time, this thing is going to kick off. It's it's so even. It is so, so close. Oh my goodness me. Okay, fine. Well, we'll have to see how that one goes. That might ruin our plans to go and get the Duchy of Brightneck right now. We'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see. And oh no. Oh no, sister of ours, Duchess Christine, has been locked up and her husband has as well. Oh dearie me. She's under house arrest, diplomacy's plummeted. Oh no, oh no. And she's still severely injured. Someone get, give her a bandage. <laughs> give her a bandage and a couple of paracetamol. I'll put her to bed. I'm sure she'll be fine. Oh dearie me, Christina. Okay, she's out of a prison. Okay, I hereby invite you to a feast at my court in Tiberias. Oh, okay. I mean, I thought, you know, you might have your mind elsewhere, given you were just in prison. But yes, oh, you don't really like us very much, do you? Uh, it will be my pleasure, sister of mine. I will come along immediately. I mean, it's quite a long way. Okay. Well, hello, Christina. How are you? I can smell the kitchen from here. So we're all the way down here. We've we've popped all the way along here. We're, there we are. We're just there. We got there quick. Feast all over my new shirt. We could all tell Earl Good. How oh, look, we're all there. <gasps> Oh, this is really nice. So we're there. Leo, Leo Gifu's there. So yeah, that's that's our niece. But then Good Hat's there as well. So and then we're there. So look, it's the, all the all the sort of the sisters and stuff. Oh, that's lovely. Christina's there, named after her mum. Christina, obviously, she's our niece. Who else is here? Who else is here? Oh, it's just it's just us. Oh, it's just like a family reunion. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, right, good. What have we been getting up to? Um, okay, right. He's 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 vomited on me. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, what I show you put on. He gets some opinion of us, but he's already at one hundred. You gain higher standards of courtesy, one prestige per month for five years. I think he probably would give him a ticking off. He would give him a telling off because yeah, we're forty nine. He's thirty. He's thirty. We we'd put him in his place. We'd do the older brother thing. Go tut tut. So. He's going to lose some opinion of us. That's absolutely fine. Whatever. That's okay. <laughs> I like this. I like the fact that the cupboards are all back together down here. That's really nice. Feast in awe. After extensive conversation over our delectable dishes, Leof Gifu expresses that she finds me most learned and wise. Ah, oh, yes. You're not the first person who said that. She recognises true intellect, I see. So she gains five opinion of us. It's on plus 11 anyway. And we gain 75 prestige, which is very nice. How near are we to get into the next level? A little way off. 
I'm not quite halfway there, but you know, we're working our way and all those little bits are helping. Now uh, the Bailey is done. We could, we could get some more troops. Um, what a feast. Okay. We lose 74 stress because we're gluttonous. I mean, we've only got a tiny bit of it anyway, but that's fine. We'll go back to being incredibly chilled out and we get eager reveler. Diplomacy plus two, intrigue plus one. At long last, we might actually have some intrigue and some diplomacy skills. What have we got? Oh, oh wow. That's going to be great because diplomacy is going to go all the way up to six. It's going to rocket all the way up to six. There we go. I mean, do you know what? It's better than nothing. And that will help with like sway schemes and things. That will help with those a little bit, which is splendid. So, um, okay, good. That was a nice party. Thank you, sister. Okay, we've swayed Reeve Wolfgar down here. So he likes us a little bit. That's absolutely fine. I would rather have our bishop properly on side. So how about we sway you? Only a 77% chance, but that's fine. And look, now it takes 19 months. So because of that tiny increase to our diplomacy, this now takes four months less, whatever it was. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Because yeah, we don't want him to not support us anymore. Because then we lose a big pile of money and we lose a big pile of troops. And that's always quite bad. And we have got quite a nice pile of money. So why don't we build another new building in Northampton? What shall we get? I mean, military camps might be quite nice. Just for an extra bit of levy going on. We've already got loads of stuff that's generating money. Money is looking okay. That gives us extra 100 levies. And then our realm, which I assume just means all of our archers. It's not within our realm borders itself. I think it means that uh, you know, we collectively, our archers do a bit more damage. Skirmishers do more damage. And skirmishers are a bit better at pursuing. So how about we get ourselves a military camp put down? Because, yeah, hunting grounds are not so bothered. Like cavalry, we don't use that. And, um, yeah, tax, we're doing okay for money. I mean, yo, I like the fact that we earn money through stuff, but we can yo, get money from other ways. We haven't really sort of done too much in increasing our levy. So let's get that. And it's only 80. It's 80 gold. So, okay, right, we'll throw that onto there, which is lovely. Um, and then, have you finished over here? Yeah, you've improved that. So let's improve, I don't know, hunter's lodges. Skirmisher pursuit, like cavalry stuff not so bothered or guilds um okay well let's let's upgrade the guild then let's upgrade the guild over in peterborough and that will give us a bit more money and then the other place we built can give us some more troops so okay yep absolutely do that please and then we've got 431 money left now how expensive is it going to be when we raise our army it's going to be 16.1 so we are going to run out of money so how about we do not buy anything right now i think we don't buy any troops we don't do anything else we just sort of yeah, we leave it as it is and oh my goodness me, the Pope has called in an awful lot of favours there. Wow. Okay, fine. Right. I, the, the, yeah, it's looking like it's okay for Catholicism. We'll have to wait and see. Again, it's a long way down here, but it's fine. I think looking at the numbers, purely on those numbers there, it's looking good for Pope Squad. But you know, let's not, let's not, you know, let's not count our chickens before they've hatched and all that kind of stuff. We will wait and see. Oh no, this all falls at a really, really bad time. Pope, couldn't you have waited a little while for the Crusades? Um, so yeah, Duke Lewithian's won. He's won that particular war. So the Duchy of de Hubarth has gone back to him, which is fine. I'm not really bothered about the Duchy of de Hubarth, if I'm honest. Um, now, how many troops has he got remaining? He's still got 3,000 troops, actually. He's still got 3,000 troops. So, okay, yeah, he's actually relatively strong, isn't he? He's not going to be that easy to go and take all the sort of the territory off and what have you. Um, okay, although I suppose we can call in our allies over here. I mean, we've, we've not done anything with them, really. We've not done anything with them at all. How's them? Um, how are you? Are you poorly? You're still, you're still obese, but you are picking up extra skills. Okay, that's fine. And you still only have her and they're still betrothed. Okay. Okay, still interesting. We'll have to, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a story sort of in waiting for now. We'll have to see what happens with that. Um, so yeah, we won't put any more, we won't get any more troops in. But yeah, it's annoying that he's still got quite a lot of troops up there. I wonder if he's going to go down and do some fighting as well. And how's our faction thing looking actually? How's this looking? It's got four members in it. Only one hundred and fourteen percent military power. Okay, how good is his power? Six thousand one hundred seventy-six. Uh, really? Okay, hang on, hang on. Well, we've got 4,000. He's got 1,600. He's got 600. And he's got 500. Oh, Gluithian's left. Gluithian has left. Okay, yeah, he can't be forced to join. Oh, botherations. Do you know what? Do you know what? Hang on a second. How about we get you to go and get some secrets from Duke Gluithian's lands. Hang on. Where's where's Duke Gluithian live? There, there, over there. Duke Gluithian's court. Go and see if you can get some secrets on him. 
That would be very, very handy. That would be really useful. If we can get like a really strong hook on him, we can blackmail him to join that faction again. The control level in the Earldom of Warwickshire changed by minus 20. Why would that happen? Our stewards average stewardship. Oh no. Our control has come down. Right, hang on, hang on. I know you were doing lots of training of commanders. Let's move you back over there to get control back. That's not going to take that long. 11 months. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So, right, you you crack on doing that. And our mystical communion bonus has ran out. So, okay, let's do another one of these, shall we? So, 300 learning lifestyle. That will be very welcome indeed. We gain divine guidance. There may be some mystical unforeseen side effects. Yeah, okay, absolutely. We've got loads of pie too. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's reach for the presence of God in transfixed ecstasy. I'm sure this is all fine and nothing terrible will happen from this. I'm sure it's all good. Okay, a reputation. With my mystical practices, I've apparently developed quite a reputation. People don't know what it is I do, uh, but they know they don't want to cross me and find out. It's ridiculous, but perhaps it's not entirely a bad thing. Um, didn't we see this before or something similar to this? Um, okay, swearing that I do no harm, we'll put them at ease. So we get divine guidance, which is the thing we kind of expect to get anyway, and then devout protector. Personal scheme power and courtier opinion up by five. Or we get dangerous to know, dread gain. Yeah, that's that's not that's not T's thing. That's not T's thing. He's he's nice. He's a nice chap. So yeah, absolutely. Devout protector. There we go. Okay, fine. So yeah, we've done it again, and now we've got ourselves we've got all sorts of little sort of extra bonuses going on here. We've got loads of little things happening down there, which is wonderful. I mean that one, two of those are coming from sort of feasts and things. Um we've got sort of communion ones, that's the ah, that's the pilgrimage one. Okay, and then we've got studying corpses, very lovely. Okay, fine, T's doing very, very well. And we have found Lord Owen. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so he's taking Countess Adele of Devon as a lover. Oh my goodness me, okay, right, yes, that is most scandalous. Hang on, let me go and check what's going on here. Um, You, oh, you're a cannibal. Um, You're only a guest, not too bothered about you. Um, your Countess Adele's lover. It's only a, a weak hook on you for revealing that you're an adulterer. Oh my goodness. Okay, do you know what? We'll blackmail you. We get three stress now, so it's not that bad. And um, he might be a rival. Do you know what? That's fine. Crack on. We'll see what happens with that. Are you going to do anything? Blackmail refused. <gasps> oh my goodness. Some misguided sense of pride or fear of greater reprisal. Uh, he claims I hold no sway over him. Okay. Um... So, I hate to admit it, but I cannot reveal the secret, or I reveal it. Okay. You are you are just. I think probably you would want people to know this. A threat was made and there was only one outcome. Yeah, we exposed the secret. I have exposed the secret. There we go. Tis all done. So, yeah, we lose the hook on the other person. But, yeah, that's the kind of thing that T would do. T would have done that sort of thing. Okay, well, there we go. Right, that guy's really, really not going to like us now. Oh my goodness me, the music is very, very sinister right now. My son Seagan was brought forward undeniable evidence that my granddaughter Eidber was fathered by none other than him. How could my own son do this to us? Seagan, do you know what this means for our family? Um, hang on a minute. Who are, who are you? Hang on a second, I'm very confused. Christina is betrothed to... Oh, Christina is... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, this is all a bit complicated. Hang on a minute. So you, you're our son. So you've, you've had a little bit of kissy kissy smoochy smoochy with, with your cousin? Is that right? Hang on, Christina and us. Hang on, I need the family tree. Okay, so there's Seekhelm, who might have possibly been a little bit naughty and a bit silly. So over there, Christina is his aunt. And then coming down from there, that is, yeah, so that is, that's his cousin. So he... Has has done kissy kissy smoochy smoochy with his cousin, and they've had a child together. Oh, this is going to be a bit complicated. Who who is a bastard child? So okay, so not born of a legal pairing of parents who have to live with the state of illeg illegitimacy her whole life. Oh, that's just all very terrible, isn't it? Um, oh, okay, right. Um, Sea Calm, you're a bit silly, aren't you? You're a fornicator. You've copulated out of sort of wedlock. Ah, dearie me. This is not going to go down well at all, is it? Seekhelm? I mean, you look furious. You look really angry, Seekhelm. Um, I mean, what can we do with you, Seekhelm? What can we do? Can we just sort of boot you out? Can we denounce you? I mean, we're not very impressed. Not very impressed. What happens if we denounce you? Um, he gains denounced. So what happens? He can now be imprisoned by any other, any other dynasty member. He loses 50 opinion of us. It costs us a bit of stuff, but do we want to do that? 
he doesn't seem like a very nice person. He's an evil antagonist who's really terrible at his education stuff. Um, okay, do you know what, Sea Calm? What we'll do is... I've, I've got an idea, Sea Calm. However, I don't know if this is going to work, but right, um, okay, come out of that for a second. Um, okay, right, well, who could have known? So this is all sorts of terrible. Right, uh, right, a bad thing has happened and it's a little bit uncomfortable for everybody, but okay. Um, how about then, how about Sea Calm? If you love the fighting quite so much, we'll allow you to be a knight. We'll allow you to go and do knight things. Now, I don't know if you'll actually get picked up on it or not, but if you want to go fighting, you can do. And if something bad happens to you, then we won't be that bothered. T's not gonna, not gonna lob you out. Ooh, <gasps> of course, this thing has all kicked off. Okay, the crusade has begun. Absolutely deus vault. Okay, so we've got some money shared out, some other bits and bobs, piety and, uh, and prestige and what have you. And the, the music is so good. It's, it's just brilliant. It's really proper sort of blood and thunder kind of stuff. Okay, right. The war has begun. Let us get our point down there. Yep, so there's our, um, there's our rally point. So I think raise all our armies. Absolutely. Move time on. Get them all raised. Right. Well, hang on. We're still not raised. Are we raised fully? Is that it? Yep, that's all of it. That's all we've got. And then let's go and see where the best place to go is. Where's the best place to launch our sort of attack? Again, we probably want to wait for Pope Squad to get there first. So maybe we sort of, we hold fire somewhere else. Yeah, it's all this area up here. It's this whole, oh my goodness me, that's, hang on, that's huge. That's a huge big area. Hang on, where can we go and attack? Wow, there's a lot of choice there. I mean, we could go and just start picking on places down here. Where are all the individual capitals of all these places? Um, yeah, where's the actual main... Where's the main capital? Where's the big capital? There. Oh, it's right in the middle. It's right in the middle. Okay, do you know what? We'll kind of come over here. What is the actual thing? The It's the, the Murdersad Sultanate. A kingdom title. Oh, crikey. Okay, it's, it's the entire of this place. Okay. Right, uh, let's let's set off then, shall we? <laughs> let's get on our boat. We'll head over here. We'll just sort of head down and we'll maybe go to... We'll go over here. We'll we'll rest over here. Oh, supply limit is enough. It's not enough. The supply limit is enough just here. So we'll pop over to there and then we'll just wait over here and, and just see what happens. What's everyone else doing that's joining in the war? Are they going to sort of just go straight in? Are they going to charge in? Or are they going to wait a little bit? We will sort of we'll wait on this island and we'll see what's happening. And at long last, we've got ourselves the learning lifestyle perk that we have been looking forward to getting, learn on the job. 20% of our counsellors' primary skills are added to our own. So 6, 4, 10, 10, 3, 24. 6, 4, 10... I said that wrong, didn't I? Hang on, maths with pench. 6, 4, 10, 3, 24. And if we improve it, so 6, 4, 10, 3, 24. So that's gone up by 4. We've got a massive load of extra diplomacy. Marshall's gone up a little bit. Uh, yep, stewardship's gone up a tiny bit. Intrigue has gone up loads. And yeah, learning's gone up a tiny bit. But learning, we're absolutely fine. We're really good at learning. We're pretty good at that, so I'm not too bothered. So yeah, okay. Now, do we keep on this? We could get Iron Constitution for disease resistance, and then we could get healthy for a medium health boost. Sanction loopholes, we can buy claims. I don't think you can buy claims of, like, your kings and stuff. No, you can't buy a claim on a liege's title. Okay, so it's not possibly that exciting. Scholar, what does scholar give us? That gives a learning plus five, sort of a chance of schemes goes up, development growth up 15%, that's quite good. That's quite good. Or whole of body gives us fertility up 20%, that's neither here nor there anymore. Um, health is medium boost and stress gain down a bit. We can get stress gain down another way. I wouldn't mind Scholar. I wouldn't mind Scholar, but also I wouldn't mind Iron Constitution and Healthy. So I think we stick in this tree for a little while longer. Let's get let's get T to get Iron Constitution. We'll get T to Healthy as well. I think they're two quite good things. T, you've proven your worth. Yeah, we were a little bit doubtful at first, but you're doing really well now. So yeah, we'll absolutely stick with you two. We'll try and keep you around for as long as we can. Um, okay, lovely. Right, everything is moving on. Our troops should be probably on the sea by now. Yep, yeah, there we go. Right, okay, get down here. Let's join in a bit of a war. Where's Pope Squad? Um, okay, they're over here. 7,000. There's a load of other people around the place. Okay, right, so people are joining in. People are coming in and beginning the sort of, you know, this slow advance toward where we're going to actually be fighting. And we've got a secret of Anne... Who are you? You're the Queen Mother. You're the Queen Mother? And you've got a terrible secret. You're a deviant. 
Uh, oh, you were married to King Richard. Oh, crikey, yeah, you're the mother of the king. And you, you're a deviant. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me just have a look at that. Um, yeah, let's blackmail you for that. Absolutely. We gain the tiniest bit of stress. Yep, let's blackmail you for that. She's going to accept because it was on 100%. We have, we have ourselves a strong hook on, on the Queen Mother, which is a weird thing that I never thought I'd ever say. But there we go. King William's being attacked by some sort of peasant guy. Yeah, I'm sure you'll deal with it, William. Why are there loads of people stood around Northampton? This makes me very nervous. I don't know why all of these armies are stood around Northampton. They're just chilling out over there. First army of Hurstingston, Pockington, Gloucester, uh, Neorios, wherever that is. I don't know where that is. Why are they all just standing around Northampton? It might be because it's quite it's quite developed and it's got a big castle. So it might be able to support all those troops. That's, that's a bit weird. I don't know what's going on there. Are they all just using this as a staging post to go off and go to war, possibly? I'm not entirely sure. Um... Oh, crikey, Lord Owen, good grief, okay. Um, yeah, okay, again, not you know, not the person we were looking for, but never mind, never mind, you're still you know, finding people, that's all good. Um, where are our troops? Where are our people? Where's our boat got to? Um, oh, I don't know, how do you find it when you're all zoomed out? I don't know where it is, where's our boat? There it is, in the Mediterranean, splendid. Okay, I've got a chance to improve my sway scheme thing with the bishop guy, so time to put my diplomatic skills to the test. Uh, yeah, 62% chance that he appreciates the effort I'm making in all of this kind of stuff. Or good hat can handle it. And um, that's an 86% chance. We only get 15 opinion. I'd rather have the 86% chance that it works. So already we've got th he's got 30 opinion of us. So this just gets us an extra 15. Yeah, okay. Let's give that a go and see if it works. Good hat. Did it work? I think he writes us a letter, doesn't he? I think he pops a little letter in the post. And uh, yeah, we find out what's happened with that. Um, okay, well, I hope that worked. Aha, right. Chappie has finished increasing control in Warwickshire. That's very good. And of course, as we're out here, we have some tournament troubles. Okay, yep, we've seen this before. Um, push Anne into the water trough. That's very unbecoming, isn't it? We can't do that. That's the Queen Mum. That's the one we've got the hook on <laughs> for, be for being a deviant. I can't push her into the water trough. She might like that sort of thing. She becomes our rival. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Spend some time with Ethel Weird. He becomes our best friend. Uh, or, I've wasted enough time on this disaster. I mean, is it bad to have a best friend? Let's let's do that. There you go. Chappie from Norman Cross. We're now best buddies. Please don't die out here. Do not die out here. That would make me sad. Oh dear. It seems that the Pope squad might have moved in a tiny little bit too early. Because, yeah, they've got 3,000 troops in this particular battle. The very dramatic sounding Battle of Antartas. However, the enemy have got over 9,000 troops. So, you know, the odds are not in the Pope's favour. And then the enemy have got people moving in as well. There's another 2,500 just here. There's 3,800 here. There's another 1,600 over here so they've got plenty of people to come in and support these guys i rather think that is a lost cause for the pope squad there that's not going to work is it that's not going to work at all i mean there are some people down here some of our sort of troops of our catholic sort of supporters are down here i mean it'd be nice if you could stay away from tiberius because that's where christina is and she's not had a very good time of late she's had a very troubled time there's been sort of you know all sorts of terrible things going on and then she was in prison and she's lost a bit of territory i mean she did throw a very good party she threw an excellent party but uh if we could stay away from here that would be nice because uh poor christina has been through enough stuff as it is recently so if we could just you know give her a bit of peace and quiet just let her chill out for a year or two i don't imagine that's going to happen i imagine there's going to be quite a bit of fighting around there but yeah the pope squad are coming in around here and they're piling all their troops up down here but yeah you're going to be required up here because oh you look at this this is so terribly painfully one-sided yeah okay so ten thousand against whatever they had i mean yeah absolutely utterly one-sided and they're still bringing more people in they're bringing more people in so look all together all together the enemy there had 16 and a half thousand troops They've just kind of doom stacked them all. Just a massive, great big pile of armies all in one place. I mean, yeah, okay, they're struggling for supplies. They're struggling for supplies. They're not overly brilliantly supplied. But, um, yeah, they've got a lot of troops in one place. Pope, Pope squad, I think we might need to do that kind of thing. We might need to just, you know, pile everybody into one square and just move around as a kind of giant marauding army rather than having everyone sort of scattered around the place. That might be a bit better. Also, who's sieging this place? Who's sieging Jerusalem? What's going on here? Why is that happening? Uh, Besieger is the kingdom of Jerusalem. Who's taking it? The populist... Oh! Oh, Jerusalem has been claimed by peasants. Oh! Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. They can sort that out themselves. That's all okay. Jerusalem, you crack on with that. 
And here we go. This is much better. So lots and lots of people are now pouring in to our sort of target area. And do you know what? I'm quite confident now that all these people... Oh, no, hang on. Nope, now I'm less confident because there's 15,000 enemy troops wandering around. Yeah, okay, right. I'm suddenly less confident about everything. We're going to stay over here on a lovely little island and just watch what's going on. Because, yeah, you need to... Right, Pope Squad. Pope Squad assemble. Everybody needs to kind of join forces and fight the, whatever it was, 15,000 enemy troops. Yeah, that's, this isn't going to go well, is it? 6,000. Now there's, yeah, so <laughs> 13,000, almost 14,000 troops versus 5,000. And everybody is running away. Everyone's going in different directions. Like this, this massive pile of troops here, this huge pile of troops, you should get in there. Go and help because the Pope's, the sort of troops are going to get murdered in that fight there. Oh, dearie me. Okay. Ah, right. We don't need to uh, sway you anymore because you seem to be on 100. Lovely, lovely. Right. Abandon that. Oh, dearie me. Okay, right. Do you know what? Until until the enemy are a little bit weaker, until some of those troops have actually been taken care of, we're just going to stay over here, I think. We're going to bravely stay over here. And then when the time comes, we might have a little sort of a little venture down to here. And yeah, maybe we could take that place. We could take this place, possibly. Just grab a few nice, simple places. Um, okay, blessings upon you, the, uh, my lord. My name is Shlomo Yitzaki. The rabbi before me gives a respectful bow. I've dedicated my life to studying and writing commentaries on the Tanakh and the Talmud. Perhaps my writings and my guidance would be of use to you in your own studies of the scriptures. Okay, let us write commentaries on the scriptures. We get... Oh, no, I might gain a learning lifestyle perk. Okay. That could be good. And this person stays at our court. Oh. Oh, you are very, very smarty pants. Okay, right. Yeah, you're very clever. You're a proper scholar. Okay. Um, I have more pressing matters. Um, might go down the path of cynicism, but we become focused. So we get a bit of income, a bit more income, and building construction time comes down. More money is never a bad thing. Oh, I will never host a heretic. Yes, of course, because, uh, yeah, we're not, we don't share exactly the same religion there, my good sir. Um, and, yeah, that's zealousness, and we just boot him out. Um, I mean, is it worth... I, I think I think T would probably say, do you know what? I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I might have more pressing matters in the real world. Focus is quite good. Get a bit more money. But then, but then T is quite religious. T is a religious sort of chap. He might go down this and just sort of embrace different cultures and stuff and different sort of religions and what have you. Because he does have, if we go down here, he has got, um, he's got this, so different faith opinion, plus 15. So, you know, he's open to different faiths. Maybe he would do that and we might gain a lifestyle perk, which is quite nice. Yeah, let's do that. Absolutely. Did we get a perk? Don't know. Not entirely sure if we got a perk or not. It does not look like it. Um, oh, that's a bit of a shame. Right, do you know what? All their troops, their massive big doom stack of troops are up there. Why don't we just pop down here? Oh, we're going to take some, uh, we're going to take some attrition. Okay, how about we pop to here then? We'll take this place and then we'll see what we can do from there. Um, after hard, uh, after days of hard labour, we look upon the pages scattered before us. The commentaries we have written are exhaustive and detailed. Thanks to that chap with the name there as guidance, I have a newfound understanding of the scriptures. I do believe the clergy would be interested in the work I have done. It's all thanks to this chappy, or why should I share the glory? Okay, so this chappy here, we gain... Oh, hang on, depending on how honourable he is, either he shares the glory with us, and we gain ourselves our perk, or he takes the credit and we just get some experience. Okay, so we could be a bit of a nefarious, a nefarious chap and just run off with the stuff. I mean, he is a fearless villain. It says he's a villain, so he might not want to share all the stuff. But okay, or why should I share the glory? An intrigue challenge, 62% we outwit him. Yeah, and he becomes our rival and leaves the court. We'll, we'll be nice, we'll be nice, and we'll see if this works. Is he going to share the glory? Nope, he took all the credits. Oh, that was a bit of a shame. I mean, we got something from it. We got some of the um, sort of learning lifestyle experience. But yes, this villainous man did indeed rob us. He robbed us of all of that sort of credit there. Never mind, never mind. Right, let's get our troops over here. So I've got to get on a boat which takes them a little while, because we're still quite unfamiliar with boats. We're not overly confident on using boats still, given that we have nothing up in the Duchy of Cupboard. We still have no sort of, no ocean sort of faring counties. None of them actually sort of, uh, you know, sort of border the sea or anything. So we're a little bit unsure on boats still. But there we go. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, um, is it anyone we care about? No, it's not. Right. Here we go. So we've now sailed across that bit. Now we're getting off of a boat again, and we're going to come over here, and we're going to have a bit of a siege of this place by the look of it. So, yes. We will siege this place. The Siege of Urbid is going to take us three months. 
And uh, Staffordshire gained military presence. Grants immunity to county corruption. That's good. Garrison size up and control growth up as well. Very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so two months we take this. I wouldn't mind taking that as well. And Pope Squad, get up here. There's like loads of, loads of enemies up there. Loads of enemy armies causing all sorts of trouble. Get up there and help out with that if you'd be so kind. But this is going very well. We're absolutely ripping into this place. That is not taking long at all. I mean, I don't know how strong. It's only a fort level two. But if we take it, that is still some territory that we've claimed that might help get that war score looking a little bit better than just plus 5%. So, plus 5% up to plus 12%. Oh, yes, that is wonderful. Okay, right. And now I think we'll head over here because this siege is sort of underway anyway. So we'll just lend a hand. We'll just go and sort of throw a few more troops at this, throw a few more sort of siege machines at it and stuff. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's 4,000 baddie troops over there. And there's a big old fight going on. The Battle of Damascus is not going the way of our crusading friends. Nope. They've been very resoundly killed in the face. Right, hang on. We can get this. We can get this. It's just us now. So the rest of the Pope's troops have moved away, but we've only got a few days left. Come on, come on, come on. Just, just, just lay off us for a few days. There we go. Okay, so this place is now ours. We've captured a person. Um, do we need to care about this person? Are they even part of the war score? No, they are not. Okay, let's go and check the prisoners. Oh my goodness me. We seem to have captured all of the people. Um, okay, you. Ransom you, 50 gold. Ransom you... Oh, you're already considering a proposal. Are they all from the same person? Um, you um, will... Do you know what? We'll convert you. Can we convert you to Catholicism? We'll convert you to Catholicism. That's absolutely fine, because that's what this is. This is a crusade, so you know what? That kind of makes sense. Um, you... Yeah, these are all the same chap. These are all people related to the same chap. Oh, dear me. You've not had a good day, have you? You've not had a very good day at all. Right, hang on. Let's let you get some of these people out of there. Um, okay... Um, our cousin Beathnock has got a bit of a, a deviant secret going on. Okie dokie, right you are. Right, is he going to let that person out? Yeah, okay, right, so yes. Right, who else can we get out there? Pays 200 gold for this person. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we'll take 200 gold off you, thank you very much. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not happy about that great big pile of troops standing just there. We are poised to run away from those guys, I think. That's not good, is it? Okay, right, come on, come on. Give us our 200 gold. Oh, my goodness me. Right, you, you're 100 gold. We are just bleeding this guy dry. Right, absolutely, yeah, splendid. We'll take that. Thank you very much. And Biscuit Cupboard has increased his stewardship by one because of that uh, trait we have, which is wonderful. And then you there, another 100 gold coming our way. That was very profitable. I mean, if nothing else, if we don't do anything else from this whole sort of crusade, at least we've done that and we've got ourselves a massive, massive pile of cash from it. So still, the enemy are moving around in a nice, sensible, clever, logical way with everybody just in one space, creating this gigantic army. And meanwhile, the Catholic troops are all scattered around the place, running around like headless chickens. It's not going to work like this, folks. It's going to result in your untimely deaths. You need to kind of club together and you know, come together as one for Christianity and, and fight these guys. Not just sort of all run around all on your own. It's not going to happen like that. So where can we go next? Now, how good is that place? It's only a level three fort, but I rather think they're going to come in and kill us. Hang on, what are they going to do? Where are the troops going after that? So the enemy are coming in what direction? Yeah, the enemy, they've got 20,000 troops. 20,000 troops there. Yeah, we're not going up that way. We're not going up that way at all. That sounds like a terrible idea. My lord, my bishop Wolfhelm approaches me with urgency. A local merchant has a copy of the influential Regula Pastoralis, but he refuses to sell it to me. If you make him see the error of his ways, I could be in your debt. Okay, I'll make sure the book gets to you. Uh, he gets, we get some learning lifestyle and a weak hook and we lose 110 money, but we did, did get a massive stack of money. So that's kind of for free, if you like. Um, sounds interesting. Um, we increase our learning by one. So we basically steal the book from under his nose. We go, oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we take the book from him and we go and get it for ourselves. Or we just tell him to clear off and that's a problem that he's got to deal with. Do you know what? Because I'm nice. Because T is a nice, nice person. Um, yeah, I'll make sure the book gets to you. Absolutely. We get 25 learning lifestyle experience, which puts us a little bit closer to getting our next perk. And um, yeah, where? Yeah, the enemy are... Okay, the enemy are possibly coming down toward us. I think it might be time for us to uh, rapidly depart. Maybe we could go over here. 
Over here, near where everybody else is. Yeah, they're coming this way. Can we move really quickly, please? There we go. Right, running away. It's all very good. We're not running away. We're strategically repositioning ourselves to over here. Right, they're going that way, which is good. I mean, which territory can we take? Could we just go and grab a load of stuff up here? I mean, this is all relatively undefended. Could we just go and be a bit sneaky and get our way over here and just claim loads of this territory? Just go, do 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 grab all these things over here. And then, because all the fighting is down here, all their massive sort of unit, sort of army masses are down here. Well, I think that's what we might do. Let's head over that way, shall we? I mean, is it going to be quicker to go by sea or are they going to walk all that way? Okay, that looks a bit dangerous. Right, what we'll do is let's pop back over to there, which does require us getting on a boat or two. It's fine. It costs a little bit of gold. I think we've got enough. I think we can afford it after we just <laughs> robbed that guy blind with all the sort of prisoners that we ransomed. So what we'll do is we'll go over there and then ah, ha, ha, we have our perk. Right, iron constitution, um, disease uh, resistance. So fertility goes up a little bit, which is okay. Um, and health, we get a massive boost to our health, which is wonderful. So T, try and stick around for a long time. Right, let's get our troops over to that island. Let's move time on a little bit quicker so I can get there slightly speedier. So sail over here, pop onto that island. And then let's head over there. I mean, is that a nice place to get? That's just that's just a level two. That's just a level two. But is that still a bit near? I'm thinking we sort of go all the way over here. Why don't we just go to, say, there? And we just... Okay. Right, we're taking a slightly unexpected route to just there. But it's quicker than going across the land, is it? It's going to take four months. Four months to get over there. But I think that might be quite good. We could just claim, what, one, two, three, four. There's quite a lot of places around here that we can claim. Level fours, that's a level one, that's a level three, that's a level two. So they're not too difficult, you know, in terms of the sort of garrison sizes and fort levels and stuff. They're not that bad. I think that's what we might do. And they might send some people up here. They might send some people up to come and fight us. But then, if that's the case, they, the enemy won't be down here. So then Pope's, Pope Squad and friends can go down here and claim loads of territory. So, yeah, it's kind of a win-win. We will distract them. We'll distract them by attacking this sort of northern area. Okay, right. That's what we will do. But we will do all that kind of stuff next time out. Because I think we're at a good point to finish things up for the moment. Things have gone okay. I mean, yes. Okay, right. We're still involved in this war. That's fine. We'll sort that out next time. It's on plus 10% to our side at the moment. It has kind of... I mean, look at that. Look at that. That is a mess. That is an absolute mess. There's troops everywhere. Enemy units are all sort of piled up. Everybody's sort of scattered all over the place. That's a big old mess. But, you know, we're still in it and it's fine and we have a plan. Um, over here, we still have not actually sorted out anything to do with this sort of faction thing. There's five members in it. So there's us. There's Duke Oswolf of Kent. Agnes of Flanders. Earl Peter of Cambridgeshire, who looks a little bit beat up. And Earl Simon of Maine. So we've got some people in it. But, yeah, we haven't got... Uh, we haven't got Chappie. We haven't got the guy from over there. Duke Glowithian is not part of that anymore. And he's got quite a lot of troops. It would be nice if he was in there just to make sure that did happen. But we'll try and look at that next time. Because, of course, yeah, we did not even have a go at the Duchy of Brynek this time. It just did not sort of come to pass because we got distracted with all the other things going on. But uh, it looks like, actually, there is a spot of bother going on up there. What's happened to this? What's happened here? Uh, occupied by Lord Owen. Oh! Oh, right. Lord Owen is now... What are you doing? You're at war? Yes, you're you're attacking Duke Glowithian <laughs> in the war against the tyranny of Duke Glowithian. Oh, my goodness me. So they're warring again. They're warring again, which could only be a good thing for us. Yeah, his troops are down. His troops are down. If this works, if this thing works, and we're able to lower the crown authority, next time might be... Once the Crusades are done, all our troops are back home, of course, it might be quite a good idea for us to then pounce on that opportunity. If his troops are a bit depleted, and they're looking a little bit tired, then yeah, we could have a little go at that. But we'll have a look at that next time out, because yeah, we'll finish up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Move out of the way, friend. I'm going to completely ignore you and do some comment moderating. <laughs> Kung Fu Croquet. Maria, you've broken my heart. There you go, some more flowers that I stored on the back of my pants. Lovely. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, I'm having the wildest of times. Enormous banana mask. <laughs>